in the back of the London Ultra Cab this week, we have one of the <laughs> we have one of the greatest MCs to rock a microphone. Yeah, they call me the Godfather of UK hip hop. <laughs> and I was going to say, a lot of people say uh, the Godfather of UK hip hop. And uh, we have the one and the only Rodney P in the back of the Ultra Cab. How you doing, brother? Uh, good, good to meet ya. All good, it's bro. It's been been, been a long time. Sure, bloody. And it's a, it's an absolute honour to have you in the cab. Thanks for the invite, bro. And I can't wait to um, to interview ya. And I know at the end of this interview as well, you're going to be dropping a few exclusive tracks yeah 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 i've got a few bits to play yeah and i think the one is with uh is with black uh, black twang and tire that's right the kingdom yeah kingdom yeah, yeah. yeah and there's a couple of other tunes from uh, an album yeah i've got i've got i've got um all sided seven inch coming out at the end of the month right so um i'll, I'll give you a little exclusive play of that so as well. yeah exciting stuff yeah but um let's get down to the old nitty-gritty all right bro. um first first two questions i always ask uh, rodney is like yeah. well where are you from and what was it like growing up as a kid i'm from battersea southwest london southwest london sw11 um and growing up as a kid was good like and i misspent youth and all that yeah it was good like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm the youngest in my family. I was the youngest out of my brothers and sisters. So I, I guess they would tell you I was a bit spot, but it didn't feel like that to me. But, but I had a good childhood. I had a, I had a happy childhood, definitely. And I, I, I would, um, did you used to do like, the, was you into the skateboarding and BMXing and all yeah, that? Yeah, all of that, all of that. I was never very good at any of it, but I, I, was, I was up for giving it a go, definitely. How about, how about the old roller, roller skating? Did that too. I mean, I'm a Battersea boy, so back in the days, Battersea Park was the spot. Battersea Park on a Sunday afternoon was all BMXs, roller skaters and skateboarders. That was normal stuff, so. When, when was this like, uh, what? This in is the, the 70s. Oh, 70s. in the 70s, yeah. Yeah, 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 70s, all the way through. The days of Kryptonic wheels and all of that. Kryptonics, you know that? Yeah, man, yeah. And the, the, white, the white ghost as well, another, another one. Sit there, um, Found your age, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're the same age. <laughs> I was going to say to you as well, um, what music was you into back then? I was into a bit of everything. Um, Again, I was the youngest in the house, so I didn't really have control of the radio. You mm. know, like, I, I got my brothers and my sisters who was in control. So it was reggae music, soul music, um, traditional J Jamaican stuff that my mum would like, which would include, like, church music and yeah. a bit of Jim Reeves. Yeah. And then uh, when I came over age in primary school, like, mm. the specials came out and the whole two-tone thing came out. So I was, I was banging to that. Like, I, I loved a bit of specials, definitely. Rap race and Mark Girls Mad at Me, a bit, bit of madness and all of that stuff. You loved, like, loved all that? Yeah, yeah. And you loved yeah. the, the, like, the, the, the kind of like the reggae sound as well? And of course, the reggae thing. The reggae thing was sound. normal. That was like, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the normal stuff. Like, yeah, a bit of Dennis Brown, a bit of Freddie McGregor. Oh, of course, Bob Marley was still alive them day there as well. Like, and John, John Holt. John Holt, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In fact, you know what? Mm. Secret is an insight for you. I've actually got John Holt's last record on my album. Have you really? Yeah. Like so. Oh. So before he died, I, I I'd actually called him in Jamaica. Mm. And and I wanted to do a remake of Police and Helicopters. Yeah, Police and Helicopters. And he's never he's, he's never yeah. voiced out a tune on a hip hop beat. Or on the drum and bass beat. And he's done a lot of, you hear him, his voice on a lot of drum and bass records. He's been sampled a lot. But he'd never actually voiced one. Mm. And I called him and I, and I told him my idea. And I was I, like, what I had to offer him was that we could get lots of shows in the UK. Like we could do some festivals. And his thing was like, he didn't get to really do much rebel music shows in the UK. Mm. When he came to England, he always did more blue rinse kind of shows. Like, you know, I was singing the stuff that my mum liked. Yeah. And he wanted to sing more rebel music because he's mm. got some rebel music too. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we recorded the tune, he sent me the chorus, and then unfortunately it passed before we got to do the work. But yeah, I've got a John Holt tune on my album. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big um That's a big thing for me. That's massive, a huge thing for me. Thing, yeah. You know, I know a lot of the young people now are gonna say who's John Holt, but for me, that's like that's like well, you when, talk about Godfathers and generations and legacy. Big time. John Holt's one of those guys, man. Definitely. Well any, anybody watching this interview. Go and do your research. Go and do your research yeah. and go and check out John Holt. John Holt, original reggae singer from Jamaica. Sweet boy reggae singer at that. Pretty dread. So I was going to I was gonna say about uh, influences. So um, was there some massive influences back then in the reggae days? Yeah, like I said, we grew up listening to reggae music. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much of a direct influence it has on the music I'm making. Now, obviously, mm. reggae music is a big part of the music I make now. Yeah, yeah. But it... it, it like the, the, when the hip hop came out, 
like my mind, my mindset completely switched for a minute. Mm. Like I became this hip hop fan. You get me? Like yeah. that became all of it. And then over the years, because we were still real young when it first came out. Over the years, you go back to what you know. And when you started, when I started making music, that's when I really started going back into my record collection and my mum's record collection and my brother's record collection and really digging out them tunes that we grew up with. Definitely, yeah. And did you go to some of like the dances back in the day, or like the part jams, yeah, the reggae course, part course. jams? Like Clapham Commons up there. Mm. They used to string up the sound in Clapham Common back in the day. Some big dances used to happen on Clapham Common. Big signs used to play on Clapham Common. Well, like young, young, young lion. Young lion. Saxon, Coxon, yeah. uh, Josh Shaka would play up there, yeah, yeah. like, and, and in, this, in the old, them days we had youth clubs as well. There were youth clubs, That's so right. like Providence was in Clapham Junction, mm. you know, like local sound subsystems would play. Like you say, Young Lion and like Hustler, First Class, Young Destroyer from Tooting. That those are the local sounds. That's what we that's what we grew up doing. Normal stuff. And the um, you could say back, back in them days as well, like the underground dance back then was called skanking. Yeah. And skanking, skanking um, yeah. originally come from Jamaica back in the 1950s. Right. Did you ever have a go at skanking? Of course. Of course. I still skank now. I don't know other <laughs> way to dance. You still skank now? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. How, that's how you dance. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard it put like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. That's what we used to do, the skank out. Yeah, yeah. I just skank out and just shake a leg and, and go on and do your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. And I was going to say, like, back in, <laughs> back in the day as well, with, like, the fashion thing, would you, like, rock in, like, the string vest and, like, the No, Clarks? I was never a string vest wearer. And the Clark shoes and I all that. I had Clarks. And, again, it all comes back to me being the youngest in my family. Right. Yeah? And, and growing up with my mum, my dad worked around. Growing up with my mum, I've got four older brothers in the house. And it's, there's a lot of hand-me-down clothes. Mm. Luckily for me, my brothers dress quite well. So I was in a lot of, like... Suede front Gabichi. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was Farrah Slacks, it was Waffles. Waffles, yeah. You had an account, there was a shop down Clapham Junction called Mr. Wolf that you would have an account there. Like, you would go there, you'd be able to get your and trousers. You'd, you'd get, rock your Farrah's and your Waffles. You'd get your Farrah's yeah, and your Waffles. Yeah. And that was all school clothes as well. Yeah, you'd right. wear them to school, but you yeah. could wear them with like. We, the, to, we were world dressed young people, you know. Remember like, the burgundy waffles? Of course, bro. Of course, bro. I had a pair. Burgundy, wasn't it? I had a pair, and I had the grey pair as well. The grey, yeah. Yeah, and them times, you know, you make sure your seams crisp down the front. Yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you don't iron your clothes flat, you iron them with a seam, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. These things are lost on young people. All they want to do now is wear baggy jeans or super tight jeans. But actually, we were like well-dressed young people, yeah. no doubt. Style, style and fashion was everything, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, most of these kids don't know what a can of starch is. Like, they don't mm. know what to do with it. I know how to use a can of starch, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> real <laughs> talk. <laughs> so move, moving on to the, moving on to the hip-hop thing, how did you get into hip-hop? How did I get into hip hop? Um, I guess like everyone else, just that them early exposure to those early electro tunes. Yeah. One of the biggest things though, like my brother Jeff, my brother Jeff, he took a trip to New York in the early 80s. Mm. And he came back with some vinyl records. Um, he brought back uh, a Run DMC record and he brought back Fresh Wild Fly and Bold on vinyl by the Cold Crush Brothers. Yeah. And, and and at that time in the UK, we were, it was still in the electro was the thing. Yeah, yeah electro was big. Yeah, electro was the thing. That was the early hip hop that we, we didn't, heard. We didn't know what hip hop was, did we? Yeah, we just had this electro music. We called it had... electro, yeah. But he brought back these records. And they were proper hip hop. And they were proper hip hop yeah, records. Like... And and Sucker MCs was one of the Run DMC tunes. It was the, it was the B side on this tune. Yeah. And that changed my life. That changed my life. Yeah, and then I went and then I went and found more, and and, and before that they had been Rockbox, and Rockbox was the tune that I just fell in love Rock, with. Rockbox was wicked, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, that's that's, that's a Run DMC favourite of mine. Rock yeah, Box as amazing well. record, and it was and it was the Cold Crush Brothers as well. So who, who would you Fresh, say? Wow, fly yeah, and yeah, bold, yeah. we'll be that way till we grow. Oh. I haven't thought of that for years. You know, that, yeah, yeah. that's like fucking up. Yeah, that was a tune and a half, bro. And listen, you're rocking the gazelles as well. Yeah. So you know. Uh, yeah, You yes. know we got to bust this old school thing. Yeah, it was a moment. I thought, I'm coming in the old school taxi. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to rock the old, the old school vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say to you, um, who was it influencing you back then as an MC? UK-wise or American-wise? Both. UK-wise, coming up through the dance hall thing, um, it, was, it was a very much a sound system thing. Definitely. Well, so like, it, was, it, was, it was like, I'm trying to think like, Locally as well, it sounds like Kilowatt as well. There was another sound around here. And, and it was the local MCs. It was the local MCs. I'll tell you who I used to love as well. 
Like, everyone credits Smiley Culture and he deserves the credit. But I used to love Asher Senator as well. Mm. And like, like Asher in court and he done an album when it was him on one side and I think it was, um, he was the guy, Johnny Ringo. I think it was Johnny Ringo on the other side. And they used to do like one side each on the same rhythms, different tunes. And Asher Senator was a big influence on me. Big influence on me. From um, uh, Buchanan Sound on Wandsworth Road. Them man there. And because my sister was a bit older and she was a raver, and she kind of knew them man there, so I, she would have that stuff in the house. So I would hear that first. Yeah, yeah. So those were the guys I heard first. Them times I'm not really an MC yet. I'm not really about the music yet. But those are the guys I'm listening to. Did you, you, did, did you have a double at toast in Bubbling? Yeah, of you course. Had a little toast. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. That was this, again, that is this normal yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't know anyone who didn't. We all did that. That's what we did. Like, it was just what we did for fun. No one ever envisioned having a career doing it. Like, there was no blueprint for how you could get paid doing it, but that's what we'd love just, to do. Just pick the mic up yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, work yeah. with it. Yeah, and can, yeah. can you remember the first time you picked a mic up? Would it have been at like a dance or something like that? It would have been. It would have been a little local thing. Yeah. I honestly you, can't youth, remember. Youth club, like, youth club or something. Yeah, in the youth club, yeah. like... Yeah, like there used to be a, a youth club in Battersea County School that we used to go to with like Tony Manger and Michael Braveboy. These are local guys around here. And um, yeah, Everton, Daddy Evie, them time there. So on Francis Chichester, which is another estate in Battersea, I used to hang out a lot on there. And it would probably have been somewhere around there, probably in Michael Braveboy's house or something like that. Just just on a fun thing. What MC names did you have back then? <laughs> Stupid ones. Stupid ones. I, I, like, I, Roddy, Roddy Rock was one, wasn't it? Roddy Rock was like, that was one after many. I've probably been called, um, I don't even, honestly, I don't remember. But Roddy Rock was the name that I, I used when I first started rapping. Mm. When I first said, right, I'm doing this hip hop thing, it was Roddy Rock, definitely. And I used to spell it R O D I E R O K because I wanted to be a bit different. <laughs> oh really? I yeah. said you spell it slightly different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like a lot of most most UK or London MCs, we still had that kind of American style twang. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the way it was because yeah. our influences were coming from, 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 America. from New, it's from in, New it's York. It's in the same way that like. All the kids who did reggae music all had Jamaican accents. That's right. Whether they came from Africa or someone else, somewhere else yeah, in the yeah, Caribbean, yeah. they all had Jamaican accents because that's mm. what reggae music sounded like. And it was the same with the hip hop. And if you was doing this hip hop thing and you was rapping, then you had a fake American accent because we all did. I knew no one who didn't, no one. And it, and, and again, if you listen to that first London Posse record, you can hear my fake American accent mm. in it. Mm. Like okay. you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it touches of it. Yeah. Yeah, and and. I mean, we'd already decided that we wanted to represent the UK thing and the UK sound. We just hadn't really worked out how to do it yet. And on that record, you can hear like Bionic does the reggae, you know, he does a reggae chatting thing, and then I'll do one more of a rapping thing. And it was kind of, that was how we were originally going to combine, yeah, that's the UK thing, you get me? Because the, the Bionic sound, he, he, he was coming from that Jamaican stuff. He, he wasn't really giving it that kind of New York. Yeah, he was giving it a very much more a reggae influenced yeah, vibe. Yeah. He was very much more reggae influenced. But then, but there it is. Bionic's not Jamaican. Bionic's family's from Ghana. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's what the, these were the influences yeah. that yeah. we had. But over time, we were able to. Just, uh, we, we wanted to do it, but didn't know how to do it yet. Yeah. You know. So and, but we were on that journey. By the time we put out the first record, we'd begun the journey of working out how to just be ourselves on the record. How did that kind of London Cockney ragger style of MCing come into play? How would you say that kind of? Big part of it is Smiley Culture, Cockney Translator. Yeah, because he yeah, was a police it. officer and like and 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 sound system in general. Because Smiley's the one that busts with it, but there were other people doing it. Like yeah. it, 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 it existed within reggae music, and there were sounds like like Saxon sound. And I remember Saxon being on like Channel 4 mm. on like Black on Black, which was a, a, an old school TV show when Channel 4 was new. And, and those guys, they had the kind of um, a kind of mentality of we're 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 UK black British Jamaican, but we're not actually yard men, you know. So yeah. we want to represent our thing, like Tipper Irie, yeah? hello darling, hello good looking, them kind of yeah, style. Yeah, eh? yeah. And them times I'm still in school, you get me? Like so, those things definitely had a big influence. And plus, like I said, we were listening to the specials and madness and all of that two tone stuff. So that was all coming in. That was all well. part of it. Yeah. That was all part of it. Learning that how to use the, the language and the vernacular that we use day to day. You know, it all, it, it, that all that all bleeds into it. So there was a moment we were just like hip hop, this new thing. We're just gonna do this hip hop thing. But as we grew through it. We, we need to represent who we are more as we do and, it. And also being from London with that kind of 
Cockney kind of style, London, yeah. London accent as well. Yeah, so yeah. It, all, it all must have played a part. And I know what, I know what as well. There was another group, yeah, who who don't get the credit they deserve. Yeah, that they they were out before us as London Posse. And they went on tour with Big Audio Dynamite and Sepo the year before we went out. And that's a group called the Three Wise Men. Our the group called men, the Three yeah, Wise yeah. Men, and it was an Asian guy, a big flat guy. He yeah. was a like he he used to do a bit of acting as well. You'd see him on TV, and and a slimmer black guy. And they used the English accent as well. I don't know how ingrained they were in the hip hop scene, but they were making music and they definitely mm. had elements of rap in it. And they were using English accents. So, you know, London Post is credited as being the first ever group to do it, but actually there'd been little elements of it being sprinkled yeah. about, you it's, know? It's just that you got so big that you kind of, you blew the thing. But I think up. the main thing for us is that we came directly out of the UK hip hop mm. scene. Like we were part of the hip hop scene before. You remember in the UK, the, the hip hop scene was built off electro music, yeah. break dancing, and body popping. Long, long before the rapping, rapping was the last real element to catch a hole in the UK. You know, so and we came from that. Bionic was a known body popper. Like he used to have a special break dancing move that he used to do. What was, I, what was Bionic's move called? Can you remember? The scorpion. I scorpion. Think. It was the a scorpion. scorpion. Yeah, yeah, it was a scorpion. Yeah. Yeah, it was a scorpion. Yeah. So I've seen like, him when he bends his legs. Yeah, he bend, yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, that's wicked. the one. So we were coming directly from the hip hop scene. Yeah. And I think that's what makes the difference. Um, hip hop back then, such as like, like the breaking. I was the a graph. body popper, break dancer, graffiti writer. I was crap at all of it. I would put my hands up yeah. and say, I was a shit body popper, terrible breaker. My graffiti was horrible. Yeah. But I loved it. But at least you tried. Yeah, yeah. I loved them days. It was the, it was you. I was a hip hop kid. I was yeah. a rapper. Yeah. I'm a hip hop kid, which means I body pop and I break dance and I write graffiti. Like that's what we did. Like we did. Like it, like people gravitated to the things they were better at. But we all did all of it. That's we all could do a wave and a little yeah. flick out, yeah. and like we could all do that. Like, you know, that was normal, bro. That's normal. We did it because we loved it. We were, we were, we were down for the culture. And this we, whole Zulu uh, nation thing really took a hold, like for real, real. And we and we were still learning our elements, isn't it? We, yeah. We were still like dabbling yeah. with bits and pieces because it was all so new and fresh. It was brand new. And we all had a tag. Everyone had a tag. Yeah. You know, like that, that was that was normal stuff. Normal stuff. That's one of the biggest things that I, I miss now, and I think that what. That's one of the biggest things the young people miss, mm. you know? They don't know how powerful it was when we had all of the elements together. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was amazing. We're so, so lucky. It was amazing. We were lucky to yeah. be of that generation. And that's not to say that the young people are missing out and all oh, your life shit. No, they're in the new space. They got their new shit. They got their own shit. But the elements of hip hop that we were, were pulled apart was a real major loss to me. When they just sucked rap music out because it could make more money, it, it was a real loss to the culture. Some of the, like, the early jams you went to back then, did you go spats? I went spats, but I went spats late. I went mm. spats maybe twice. Yeah. I used to go electric ballroom. Yeah. Um, Cinderella Rockefellers. Cinderella Rockefellers. Cinderella yeah. Rockefellers in Pur in Purley. Uh, Tiffany's in Wimbledon. But then things like the Shaw House. Shaw um, Theatre. Yeah. Shaw Theatre. What? Uh, you went to the Rap Attack. I went to the Rap five. Attack. Yeah, I went to Rap Attack. I went, I went to. to that, I was yeah. at the Wag Club when Cookie Crew won the, the, the competition. Rock. Yeah. Um. Fat um, Boys with... Uh, I went to Fat Boys, I actually got a signed picture from the Fat Boys show as well. well I, I mean, I used, to, I used to get about, bro. I used to get about, like, definitely. I, I, and, I, and, and you was, um, I know you didn't come into it to a little bit later, but you started hanging around Covent Garden as well, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'll tell you, like, Covent Garden. Because we, we got we got a cover, because Covent Garden is a very important place. Absolutely. And the reason, the reason I say that is because that place was kind of a place where a lot of people met up yeah. to basically polish their yeah. skills or their elements. Yeah. Like Charing Ch Cross underneath the, in, the, in, the, in the tube station where yeah. man used to go in there and break and practice their moves, yeah. And how I got there, like, I used to hang out with, with um, the Boogie Bunch guys. Mm. They weren't the Boogie Bunch then. All Batsy people. Big up, God rest his soul, DJ Swing, Brian yeah. Daly. Yeah. Like, who was one of, he was a golden dude. Like, golden, golden heart, golden energy. And we used to hang out in Clapham Junction next to Super Drugs. There used to be a, like a flat piece of concrete there. And you could, we'd be out there all night till like four o'clock in the morning with a stereo and body popping the brake tarts and the chatting shit. And it would be like Brian, Mad P, Robert Forge, or like the whole of the Boogie Bunch who became Boogie Bunch. And it was those guys who first took me to Covent Garden. 
Like I went with them the first time. I'd, I'd been through Covent Garden on my own a couple times, but I didn't know anyone. And it was those guys who kind of introduced me to a few people. Like, you know, right. let me let me know a few people. And yeah, that was a blessing. Because that, that was like Mecca. Covent Garden was like Mecca. And that's where the real, the, the energy for the London hip hop scene was. It was in Covent Garden, absolutely no doubt about it. And the reason why, why Covent Garden was Mecca is because that was a major meeting place for everybody, not yeah. just from London, yeah. but from ground as well. Yeah, it was like neutral ground. If you get to, if you made it to Covent, you're like you're part of the crew. Like it don't matter where you come from. Now you're a Covent man, isn't it? You're you're part of Covent Garden crew. Yeah, that was and again that's early days. So that's the days like I've just met like MC Mello for the first time and, and Basil Liverpool for the first time. And those are yeah. guys I know from this area. Of, like that I I know Basil Liverpool and MC Mello from. Battersea County Youth Club, about, where I used to go with 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 Michael Brayboy and like my local friends. Yeah. And how about Cookies as well, because Cookies were from around this way. Yeah, Cookie, Cookie Crew from up the road. Did yeah, you yeah. meet them round here or back in Common Garden? Um, where did I meet the Cookie Crew? I would have known them from around here first, actually, because mm. Brian and the, like the Boogie Bunch guys would have known them. And there was a crew called, the, um, they were called, it was the Warm Milk and Cookie Warm Crew. Milk and, Cookie, yeah. and they used yeah. to do events in Battersea Town Hall. It was Battersea Bat Art Centre now, but back then it was Battersea Town Hall. And they would put on events and stuff in there. And they were called, what were the Boogie Bunch guys called? The Harlem Breakers or something like that. Like early days, early days. And that's where I know them from originally. Even like my, my older sister is, is really good friends with um, uh, Susie's sister from Cookie Crew. Right. So I, I, I probably met them in passing quite early. But before I, the Covent thing. Before the yeah, Covent yeah. thing. But when I saw them in the WAG club, like, I never really knew them then. I was a fan of theirs. Like, I knew who they were, I recognised them from locally, but I didn't. I, they, we weren't friends. I was more of a fan. I think they were amazing. Did amazing. you know what? When, when they done that Planet Rock rap, I right. can still remember the lyrics. Oh, God. Because I, I MC <laughs> to Cookie when I see her out one time. It was right. like, for we are the Cookie Crew, two bad MCs, and we're gonna break through, we're gonna wow. big with a beat, fun with an F, rap to the beat till there's nothing left. Well, it's a beat that's British and it mustn't blow your mind. Hip hop is a craze taking over all time. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> that's, that's stuck with me like 30 odd years. Wow, well, you see it there, you see it there. That's the impression that this thing made on our lives. I mean, really, I feel like hip hop changed the direction of my life. Absolutely. And then I feel like Public Enemy came, came and changed my mindset as well. Public to Enemy, go with yeah, it, like, I mean. Yeah. We're going to get onto Public Enemy in a bit, actually. But um, also, back in the 80s, pirate radio was massive, massive in, in yeah. London. I mean, you had yeah. stations like Invicta, yeah, yeah, yeah. JFM, LWR, KISS FM. We had it all. We had it all. What would you say was the importance of pirate radio? It was us playing music for us with love and passion. Mm. Like, you know, again, I, I, I was born into that. And it, it, in a lot of ways, for me, it was the norm. But I recognise it now as, like, if we didn't have that, we would have been starving. Like, time, yeah. And people were risking their life and liberty to deliver that music. It wasn't easy. I mean, I've got a documentary about pirate radio, The Last Pirates. You can, you can check, if you check my YouTube page, it's on my YouTube mm. page. And, and the importance of pirate radio in the UK is unquestionable in terms of the fact that the fact that we were even able to listen to this music because they was, it was being played nowhere else. This, this quality music. 100%. Quality music. 100%. And not just hip hop music, soul music, funk, jazz, like... Reggae. Yeah, reggae, all of it. Like, all of it was, was on pirate radio because, because commercial radio was not feeding us. Like, we, we, we weren't even, a, we weren't even a, a, an afterthought for the, the, the controllers of commercial radio. But there was a huge audience for it. And I'll tell you another big thing as well, where um, pirate radio was was well ahead of the time, was to promote the raves. The yeah, pubs. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. The advertising and, and where to go mm. and you know what, where you're going to be on next week Saturday night and yeah. who's going to be there. Yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's be planned. And it made some DJs absolutely super famous, super famous. Like there's a lot of these guys who are out now who who, who beat their careers from pirate radio. Now they've gone like they're massive. Yeah, now Norman, they're, Norman Jay. Uh, Norman Jay. I mean, I mean Westwood. On. West like. Who? Jazzy B, like, who? who? Yeah. Like, these are now international superstars, but Pirate Radio was the breeding ground. For Trevor sure. Nelson, all, all them Trevor people. Nelson, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. The, the, list, the list go is endless. Endless, endless, endless. endless. Ron Tom, yeah. like, 
Uh, you know, it's one of those ones where, where I feel like I'm doing a disservice if I don't say all the names. So no, let's no, just stop. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, Pirate Radio yeah. was important. the foundation in terms yeah. of a music education for us. And yeah. you, you all know who you are if you're watching this. Absolutely, I salute you. Each yeah. and every one of you, I salute you. So don't get the um if we don't mention you, all right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Rodney, how did the London Posse form and who was in London Posse? Originally, London Posse was me, Bionic, um, Will Rock, Willa Mays, uh, Basil Liverpool, Darnell. Darnell was another body popper from Covent, was in the early days. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. But it, it, the, the, the lineup kind of shifted by the time we got to like come out as a group, you know? But earlier we always had two dancers with us as well. That was like, that was normal so, so stuff. So Basil and Darnell were your main Yeah, two yeah, they were, they were our dancers back yeah, then, yeah. yeah. And that was normal stuff, you know? Um, how we met was actually, we met at a video shoot. Me and Bionic first had a conversation at a video shoot. And Bionic's a bit older than me. And he knew my brothers. Like he knew two of my older brothers. So I, I was aware of him. Like, I was aware of who he was. And those guys had gone to do a video shoot. Obviously, they're dancers. So this is Basil Liverpool, Darnell, MC Mello, and Mark Monero. He was an actor. He used to be in EastEnders and stuff. And they were a crew called Truly Unique. And I used to follow them around. They would do a lot of shows in like the live scene. Like Steve Walsh nights. Steve, remember them days? Yeah, Steve Walsh and, like and Tony Blackburn. Yeah, of course. Right. So they used to put on these soul dance yeah, parties. Yeah. And these guys would often be booked to perform and dance there. So we would follow them around doing that. And they were booked to do a video shoot. I think it was with um, Cher Perrier, I think her name was. Cher Perrier. Wow, fuck, I ain't even thought about this stuff for years. <laughs> like, and it was on, uh, I think it was Swallow Street, near Hanover Grand. The yeah. place near Hanover, Hanover Grand. And while they were filming the video, me and Bionic were just sitting down, chilling, drinking free drinks or whatever we were doing. And we started talking about our ideas about music, about what we thought this UK thing should be and what it should sound like. And that was really where we first got together and thought, right, me and you are going to do a thing. And, and in the early days, it was, like I said, he was going to do the Jamaican thing, I was going to do the American rapping thing, and that was going to be our UK star to show that our thing's different. Like, we're going to do this combination. But we didn't have the name London Posse. We were just like, you know what I mean? Just talking about doing this music. The idea of us being together as a group and making these records came about, it was then. And then, Sipo, who is really, like, we formed around him because we were just talking about making music. We didn't have no access to no music. And Sipo, he came to us as his mates and said, well, I have this opportunity. Do you lot want to come? And that was Big Old Dynamite, which was um, a band. When, when Mick Jones left The Clash, he went and formed Big Old Dynamite. And that was Don Letts and Leo and, and, and um, Dan Donovan and, and the guys who went on to be... Um, what's, the, what's the name of this, the band Leo's in now? Um, Dread Zone. Oh, Dread, Dread Zone. Yeah, Dread Zone. Oh, right. So the guys who were, who were Dread Zone were yeah. originally all part of Big Old Dynamite. Right. I, did, I didn't even know that. Yeah, we oh. learned something new every yeah, day, didn't yeah, yeah. So, Sipo came to us and said, listen, I've got this opportunity. I've been on tour with them before. Him and, him and another guy from Manchester named Sefton, mm. who a lot, of, a lot of people know Sefton, he's a name brand still. They had worked before at beatboxes and they had gone on tour with them before and again with uh, the Three Wise Men. And they'd come around again, they'd offered Sipo the opportunity to go on tour again. And he came to us as his mates and said, We're going, well, I've got this opportunity, do, do you want to come and get involved? And he took us around to Mick's house, Mick Jones from The Clash. Now, I'm not one of impressed because I don't know who you are. So, like, you know, that was a big thing. And, and that's where we met Don Letts for the first time, was in Mick's house in the basement. And we had a little jam session. I wish I had the tape of that, to be honest. Like, that would be worth gold now. But we had a little jam session in the basement in Mick's house. And off the back of that, we got invited to do the tour. So we went out on this tour. With, 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 again, we formed around Sipo. We worked out a little show. We, we, I think we brought the dancers with us as well for that. And on that first tour, was on, with Schooly D was on the tour with us. So 
And Schooly used to like sit me down personally and kind of talk to me about how to be an MC. Like those guys, if I'm rapping and I fuck up the lyrics, I didn't know what to do. I'll fuck, I'll fuck, I'll fuck it up. <laughs> like, and he was the one who was like, no, nah, when you fuck it up, no one don't know you fucked it up, bro. Just keep it moving. Yeah, like, yeah. like, I've got them lessons from Schooly D. And I used to go out on stage with Schooly and be like, um, he's like security on the edge of the stage. I was quite a big man, <laughs> yeah, you know what I yeah. mean? And I used to wear the black hat and all of that. And like, so Schooly was like a real, a real mentor for me them day there. But we didn't have the name London Posse yet. We didn't have the name. So we'd finished that tour and Bigger and Dynamite were going to New York. They were going to New York to do some more shows. And me, Bionic and Seapot said, fuck it, we're going to New York. And, and my auntie lived in Brooklyn them time. She still lives in Brooklyn now. And we just fucked off to Brooklyn and stayed in my auntie's house. And kind of just followed Bigger and Dynamite to New York. And it was on that trip we were the London posse. When you're in New York and there ain't that many London people, and you're, if someone's looking for you, where's them dudes? <laughs> London posse, yeah, that London posse. So that, that we became the London posse in New York, not as, a, not as a, a, a name for our group, but that's what they called us. When we came back to the UK... So you, you never named yourself it, you was actually called it? Yeah, we were called it. You was like, we, oh, there's the London posse. Yeah, but when we came back to the UK, what happened was, like, on the first tour, they, they used to have these posters. I remember they used to have posters on Lavender Hill even. And it used to say, um, like, the Big Order Dynamite Tour, and it had our names, uh, Bionic, Roddy Rock, Seapo, the Human Beatbox, and Two Dancers. That's what it said. That was the billing. On the second tour, we've come back now. This, they've invited us to go back again. And it was like, on a phone conversation, we need a name. We need a name to put on the poster. What is you guys' name? And in, in, in a moment, we just said, ah, the London Posse. That's kind of, and that's how we got the name. That's how it came about. Because wow. we needed a name for the poster. And we had about, you know, a minute and a half to think about it. And Rodney, your first uh, record release was uh, was London Posse. Yeah, that's Back what it was in called. 1987 on um, Big, Life. Big Life, wasn't it? Big, Big Life, Life yeah. Records. Yeah, Jazz Summers' record label. Jazz Summers and Tim Perry. So what, how did you get in touch? Did Big Life get in touch with you? Did you make a demo and send a demo tape off to label? Now, what happened? What happened? Fucking hell, bruv, you're really taking me down memory lane with this thing, bruv. I've really not thought about any of this shit for where, years. Where, where was the studio that you made the tune? Was it over this way? I haven't got a clue. I, I, I actually don't remember. I, I don't remember. But I'll tell you how I'll, I'll tell you how it happened, though. We were doing the Big Euro Dynamite tour. The very last show of the tour was in the Astoria in London. I actually have a photograph of me, Bionic, and Sipo on stage at that show. I've got, I've got a photograph of that. A really cool picture taken by my brother Jeff, actually. Really cool picture. Really black silhouetted picture. Mm. Really cool picture. And, and Jazz Summers came to that show. Jazz Summers, who used to own Big Life, God rest him as well, he's passed since. He came to that show, and off the back of that, he offered us a record deal. Off the back of that. Because he saw something in us, and it was this virgin and new sound. He said he was, he, was, he, was, he was a smart guy, Jazz. He was he was ahead of the curve, definitely. So what you you was performing London Posse on stage? We were performing. I don't know if we, were, we didn't. I, I doubt we had that song. No. In fact, we definitely no. didn't have that no. song. We definitely didn't. We were just doing that one no, of you our just routines. Do, you just doing your thing. We were just doing our yeah. routines, and and he saw that and invited us to come and make a record. Actually, it was, we recorded it in Wilsden, in, in Wilsden or Halsden. And because it was Westwood was producing it, Westwood gets the credit as producing that tune. And really, I would say that really DJ Business produced that tune. The photograph that was taken of you, Sipo, um, DJ Business, and Bionics, it was on a top of an escalator. Can yeah. you remember where that was? Leicester that escalator. Square. That's Leicester Square. Was it? What, yeah. one of the exits? It was, it was coming out of Le Leicester Square was closed that day for whatever reason. It was when they still had the wooden, the wooden right. escalators. And you used to be able to smoke. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, and I'll tell you how that came <laughs> in hell. Well, this is nuts. Like, OK, so we've just signed to Big Life Records. We've made this record. We've got this record. We're going to do a photo shoot for the album, for the, for the record cover. And Jazz Summers was married to Yaz. Do you know, remember, yeah, if you remember, the only the blonde, way is the blonde up, crop, the blonde, the, crop. The blonde yeah, yeah, crop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, now her dad was the manager of Leicester Square Tube Station. Wow. And he gave us the in, like, you lot can come in here and use it to take, to do your photo shoot. She sorted it out for us. Well, like, you went in one night? When no yeah, one was it was no one, was no one there, it was just us there. And we, we got to take those pictures, we got to do our photo shoot in Leicester Square. Let's go to tube station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nuts. Wow, nuts. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And there's also there's, there's another um, there's another photo as well that always sticks with me. And it's a it's you with bionics, and you're having um, a cigarette with two old Bill, two yeah. police, yeah, two, yeah, police yeah, yeah, two police yeah, yeah. officers. Yeah. <laughs> was was a real police officer? Nah, bro. That, 
that's day when we were smoking a spliff on set. So that was down the road, that was down here, that was Union Grove off Wandsworth Road. Union, so we just right, it was yeah, actually right station. down the police station. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. But we were shooting the video for How's Life in London in the Union Grove in the estate. And Blake Bedford, go on and big up Blake Bedford. And those guys came in their police uniforms and were extras. And if you watch that video, there's a scene on the balcony where uh, someone gets dragged out of the house. Jason, my mate from from um, from Labrick Grove. I think it was Jason, yeah. And he, he's getting dragged out of the house by two police officers. And those are the two police officers. So they're actors. And and, and during the, the break, we were just smoking a spliff, like waiting for the next scene. And someone <laughs> took that picture. Yeah. That's brilliant. I love that. I love that yeah. history. And, um, right. I, <laughs> Money, I was going to say that. <laughs> this is fun. I'm enjoying this, you know, yeah, bro. I'm yeah. enjoying this. Well, the, the thing with these interviews, it's all quite relaxed anyway. And and listen, you're also sitting in the, in the back of a black cab. Right. So usually what's said in the cab usually stays in the cab. OK. But obviously, this ain't going to stay in the cab. So. Fair enough. So battle rapping. Do you, have you ever tried battle rapping? It's a battle rap. Yeah, of course. You couldn't, you couldn't be a rapper. Like, you couldn't come from the generation I come from and not battle as a mm. rapper. You wouldn't be a rapper. you got to battle. Mm. Like... That was normal stuff. I never, I never stayed as a battle rapper, but you know, my Roddy Rock days. That's what we did. That's what we did. Yeah. Can you? Can you, you know what? I'm, try, I'm actually trying to think about. It. I'm, I'm going. Let's go back a bit, yeah. Because now, as I'm sitting there, I'm kind of remembering where my MC career starts. Mm. Yeah. And my first lyric, like not maybe not my very first lyric, but, but one of my early lyrics was a lyric that I stole. I was, I, I bit this lyric clean, and I went to America with my mum when I was maybe 12 or 13, yeah? And I can't remember the name of the group. So this was around like 82, 83? Yeah, this is early, yeah, this is early. And you might even know the song, um, Joni is skinny, you might say bony. Then I did the dare with an old man, Tony. Tony thinks he's the one and only, but that is the title we reserve for Joni. Or something, something, something some, like that, yeah. Something that's like that, like the Skinny Boys, boys or yeah. like... I think it might have been Skinny Boys. It might be something like that, yeah? yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to appreciate this, but I came back to England with that lyric and I made out it was mine. <laughs> like, I totally bit this, <laughs> totally bit it. And we, again, we, Batsy County Youth Club, that's where we used to hang out. And MC Mello used to come there. And I would chat this lyric to Mello, and I said, yeah, I'm going to teach you half of it. And we would do it as a duo. But he thought I wrote it. He didn't know that I hadn't written it, and I didn't tell him. So we would do it as a duo. And that is kind of where our MC career began. This is long, this is before London Posse and all that shit. It was Roddy Rock and MC Mello. And that's when we started. We had this one lyric, but now we need more. We can't just have one forever. And now we need, and that's why we started writing raps. To, to, to add to our little catalogue of lyrics after we uh, after I'd stolen this verse. Yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. Now it's coming back to me. That's that's yeah, that's how it started. Me and MC Mello. That's a, a me and MC Mello. I love love that history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all coming out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it coming. This is good, bro. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Right, um, Rodney. Also, um, back in the uh, back in the eighties. Yeah. Um, was there any other like hip hop groups or MCs that you would really rate from the UK? Yeah, start with UK. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like, and again, also, listen. If Rodney misses anybody out, don't get the. Hump yeah, out. like, I'm obviously gonna miss out lots of shit, and I'm just remembering it as I go along. But like at that time, it was it was C Limits Crew was my crew, like um, Flyboy G and Stevie B. Yeah. 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 Stevie G, yeah, Stevie G, Stevie B. No, it was Flyboy G. One of them Gary. guys was one of them guys in um, EastEnders. Yeah, what? Gary, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was Pretty Boy G. I remember seeing them back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On stage. And yeah. you know what? They money had a swagger and a, and, and a level of theatre about it. They used to wear like uh, military suits, That's like right. officer and a gentleman kind of gear. Like they looked cool as fuck. You know what I mean? Like. So I was big into them. And it was straight uh, straight American styling. All of it was like f fake American accents, but I loved it. So I loved those guys. I loved, I loved um, Family Quest as well, who were yeah. in like, um, what's the electro rock, the tune that, electro the English rock, yeah. film, yeah. Family Quest were wicked, wicked. Um, Dizzy Heights? Dizzy Heights, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Like, for me, like, and, and the Cookie Crew, and the Cookie mm. Crew I thought were incredible. And I, and I was a fan. I'm a young teenager looking at these guys, I'm looking up to them like, wow, like wow, you know? So like, like we said at the beginning, like they call me the godfather of UK rap now, and I, and I get it, you know? Like, I, it's not that I'm the greatest, 
but I'm the guy who's still here. So I, I've right, been here yeah. the longest, yeah. so yeah. I get the title. Stopped. I've You've just been here stopped. constantly. But there's so much that goes before. Mm. And I came into it as a fan. Like, so so even long before we started rapping and doing this London Posse stuff and brought the UK accent into it, the scene was already flourishing and beautiful and, and full of talent that made someone like me want to be involved, you know? So, yeah, this UK scene, man, it's, 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 been a, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure to just be a part of it. Real talk. And, and those early MCs, like um, Junior G, Junior mm. G from the Capital Boys, he was a white rapper in 1983 or whatever. Did he have the curly hair? With the curly Glasses. hair, yeah. yeah. Wicked, yeah, wicked yeah. rapper. You get me like, them days, that's that's what it was. I, I was looking up to them, man. And, and the events that Westwood would be putting on those days were the place to be them time, definitely. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, some of them events, as we said, like Rap Attack. Rap Attack, yeah, man. Uh, like my sister, my sister, her baby father, Bull, who later became the London Posse's manager, but back in the days, he used to do security at like rap attack parties, so I could get in, like, but I weren't even old enough to be in, and and that was an education in itself, just because I had this like he was the head of security, got a girl where I like in it, and and yeah yeah again I haven't <laughs> thought about this stuff for so long, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. R R R Rodney, do you remember uh, Hip Hop Alliance as well? Hip Hop Alliance, remind me, it rings a bell. That was like you become a member of it, and um, yeah, it was that was like. Um, they used to do a few little bits and pieces as well. It they, rings a bell. It rings a bell. Yeah. It rings I've a bell, definitely. I've got the membership form at home. Bro. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's just, just so, so much... There so was so much, much history. There's so much history. And it, and it was so much about the culture them days as well. As I always stress, nowadays, we, 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 it's all about rap music. It's like, they say, when they talk about hip-hop, what they mean is rap music. That's Because right. hip-hop and rap music yeah. ain't the same thing. No, rap no. music is just a part of the hip hop culture. That's right. But I now it, it just takes all of yeah. the light and the elements have been pulled apart. I know kids who do graffiti who don't listen to hip hop. Like, that don't even fucking make sense to me. Like, yeah. you know, that is, this, 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 those are the elements. There's, those are the elements that connect and make the whole, so. I mean, even back in the day, you know, I mean, the originators of people doing graph, they also wasn't into the hip hop music. They yeah. was a lot into rock and all that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but what we what we got to say is, Hip hop did, uh, sorry, graph did become an element. Of Absolutely, it come under that umbrella. Absolutely, Abs by the time it got to us, and I'm aware of the fact that, it, like, they're artists, they come in different spaces. Yeah, you can yeah. listen to whatever you like, but for someone like me, if they're doing a graffiti, style you're doing piece, a graffiti style piece with your wild style lettering. Yeah, that's really, some hip hop that's shit. Hip, yeah, that's yeah, some hip hop yeah, yeah. shit. Right, hundred percent. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, right, let's change it up a little bit. Um, through, this is a little tough question. Well, it's not that tough. <laughs> I mean, throughout like the seventies, eighties, nineties, and two thousands. Yeah. Could you give me like a selection of tracks that kind of blew you away? You oh, was like, this, this, this is on repeat, and I'm like, because I mean, I had a few like. See, now this is this is where I'm really gonna fuck. Because this is where I'm gonna leave the cab later and think, ah, oh, fuck, I should have said, said this. Ah, oh, fucking should have said that. But, but um, was there certain, must have been like certain little tunes where that they, they was like on repeat, repeat, Run repeat. DMC would be one. A rock Box. Rock Box would be one. And then the King of Rock album as well. Um, Eric B and Rakim. I'm not gonna, these can't be in any kind of order. No, no, no. Eric B and Rakim. Um, Public Enemy. Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince had a tune. Which, which Public Enemy? All of them? All of them, all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Starting from my Uzi Ways a Ton. Starting from Uzi Ways at time. At them times, we used to go delirium. I used to be in I delirium. That, Saturday nights. On a Saturday night with what, the, the Covent Garden room band. room at the back? Nah, in delirium. Well, both, but they would be in the main room as well. And in delirium, them times, they would put up like a BMX ramp in the middle on the on the main stage and shit. And they'd play all kind of music, that but they'd have moments. That was in your story, wasn't it? That was in your story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, like we'd be in, I'd be in there with like DJ Business, so Spider Billy, Airborne, James Chili. Oris, uh, Pam would be there, Danny Francis would be there, and they were all dancing, man, they were all dancers. And they'd do, they'd play like my Uzi Ways a Ton, and they'd have a dance, Rap, get down, my Uzi Ways a Ton, and then man be busting <laughs> shot in the air. And it was the energy of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, them, like that. Again, I need to give more credit, like, I need to backtrack more, like, the oh, importance cool. of Covent Garden and them, man, the energy that yeah. them, man, brought was yeah. just amazing. People like Dolby D, these unsung heroes, London All-Stars. Yeah. London All-Stars in and of itself. Like, and, 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 um, 
Lift to break. break. Hallett mm. and them man there with Billy and Spill. Like, and I remember seeing the man battle again in like Lyceum and just being blown away. Just being blown away. And we'd spend all day in Covent Garden and then at night we'd go to Leicester Square. Like, and be in Leicester Square all night. And in Leicester Square you could hustle a bit and try and make a bit of dough and like, you know what I mean? But them man there, they were the ones who made me want to be down. I wanted to be down. I saw I saw the London All Star Breakers on Blue Peter uh, the day after I came. I came home from school. You, you know, them times it would be the, the kids programming from play school through to Jack and Nori, and That's it would right. end up with yeah, Blue Peter, wow. right? And on, and them man was on Blue Peter. Yeah. And it's, these guys have just come back from New York where they entered the break dancing competition. <laughs> and, and 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 like it was it was Dolby, it was Flipski, it was Danny. It was um, uh, uh, Feathers. Um, I don't know who else was there. Maybe Milton and them man was there. And I remember watching that shit and thinking, oh my God. Them times I haven't been to Covent Garden yet. But I know that, when I know that's that's where those guys hang out, I'm going there. You that's where that. I want to be. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, man. Like So Covent Garden, in terms of this hip hop scene here in the UK, that was not in the UK, because every city had its place. But, but for but Londoners, but, oh. but you know what else we're wow. missing, missing out on as well, Rodney? What which we haven't spoke about What's that? at Covent Garden, the graffiti art. Of course, of so course. Chrome Angels. Chrome Angels. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know when this is going out, but I sent Mo to a message today. I sent him a message today. I speak to Mo every now and again. I speak to Pride every now That's and right. again. Yeah, yeah. Pride, Pride did the first London Posse cover. Like that's how we come. That's how we always stay connected to the scene. Like these are, these might be small things to other people, but we were always about the scene and the culture. And Pride did the first ever London Posse cover, and I've just asked Mo to do the cover for my album, and I'm hoping he comes back and says yes. Wow. So Pride, if you're watching album and Mo ain't done the cover, then you know that I'm heartbroken because I really want him to do it. Real Mo, prop. listen, if you're watching this, you gotta get on. Come the on, Mo, bro, show me some love, come bro. On. Do my album cover for me, please. Come keep, on, we yeah, gotta do keep this. it thorough. But also, uh, talking of other crews as well, there's London Giants. Right. London Giants were legendary. Right. Um, right. Artful Dodger. Artful Dodger, of course. Who did the big wheat bits for yeah. you in, in Hammersmith. Yeah, 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 of course. Artful Those were regular faces. Those are regular faces that we would see every weekend without fail. Yeah. And a lot of time for me, I'd be coming home from school and going straight to Covent. So it weren't even just the weekends. It was all. It was every day, all day. I was in Leicester Square every night, Covent Garden, straight after school. Like, come on, take my tie off, out the door. No straight one ain't out. seeing me. I'm gone. Like, like, straight up. Rodney, can you give me some of your kind of like your biggest highlights so far? I mean, th th obviously there's many, many, but I mean, uh, did you see Public Enemy at um, Hammersmith? Yeah, of course. Or was that a highlight? That was definitely a highlight. Definitely a highlight. That was, that was, Public Enemy, like, Public Enemy changed the way I think. Mm. Like, they helped mold me as a man. And that's crazy to say, but it's true. Like. You know, and, and hip hop, had, like I said, it'd been it been electro, it'd been rapping, and all of this stuff, and we loved it. I was deeply ingrained in it. But what what Chuck D brung lyrically, in terms of sending you to the library to f thinking think about, about shit, things. it yeah, changes yeah. the way I think. Like it, that that level. I grew up listening to reggae music, which, which which always had a level of black consciousness about it. So I was always aware of my blackness, always. But Public Enemy sent me on a new journey like they sent me on a new journey like and, and these new names were being thrown into the mix that were getting me excited and, and, and having me think about who i was and where i stood in the society you know yeah man and Probably also changed and, my life and also chuck d as a person he's he's, a, he's one of the he's one of the greatest people i've met he's a, he's a diamond geezer he's a he? diamond geezer like the energy you get from him he's he is so given and yeah. i don't mean he like in in no charitable sense i mean given in terms of his time and his energy That's and right. you know he's 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 a golden guy the planet should be grateful for people like that well I, i'm aiming to get chuck d in this cab that would uh, be a blessing bro well chuck's been in my cab right? but, but what i mean i'd love to interview chuck d yeah i can imagine I would love to interview him again. I've yeah. interviewed him a couple of times now. I interviewed him when me and Skits did the radio. We did the, uh, the original Fever show on One Extra. I got to interview him there. And then I got to interview him when I did um, the Hip Hop World News documentary that I did for, for BBC4. And he's a diamond. He's a diamond. He's a diamond he's a pop, geezer. Pop, pop, I, I mean... Guy. Like, he, he, I, I, I burst into tears in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I burst into tears in his house. He wasn't in the room, thankfully. But... I was being in there. I'm about to interview him, and and the crew were interviewing me for a link. 
and it just kind of, it, it, I just got flooded with emotion. Like I was thinking about just how important he would, he was in my life, mm. and I just got flooded with emotion. And I say that unashamedly, like it's actually in the dock. Like, I, I, and I, 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 I had the option to cut it out. It didn't have to be in the dock, but I thought like. I wanted people to know how important he was. Like, he, they, like, and that's, it was a real emotion at that time. It took me by surprise, I didn't see it coming. But that's really how I felt. It took me to a place that I was thinking about things that I hadn't thought about for so long. And he was really, really, really important in my life. Real, like, as a man, like, he really helped me change the way I think and, be, and in, in, in a lot of ways helped me become a better person. I was grateful. And now here I am in, his, in, in, in the house he grew up in, about to talk to him, I, I got a little bit emotional. <laughs> Real talk. Would, would you say Chuck is probably one of the biggest influences on you as a person? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and especially then, he, he, I would say he, he was a very pivotal moment. Like, I never grew up around my dad and all of them sort of now. I grew up with my mum and my family and my brothers and sisters. And, and one of the most important men in my life was Chuck D, who mm. I never, I didn't know. He was a rapper who lived a million miles away. But what he had to say on those records helped shape who I became and who I am now. Like, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm grateful because I don't think I turned out too bad. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. Yeah, and, no, um, no. Rodney, is any any? I mean, that that that, that is huge, a uh, huge highlight. But has it been another couple of like little little big highlights for you? Wow, bro! No, nah, this is another one. I'm gonna get out of the cab and regret it. Um, you know, one of the biggest things about the music for me is that it's, it's enabled me to see the world. Mm. Yeah, I've I've been I've been around the world pretty much, and. I mean, early days, I've been to Zimbabwe and I've been to Sierra Leone and I've been to Japan and like, but this is like in the eighties, like when I was still young and it was these experiences were like really affecting me, like really opening my eyes to what the world could be and potentially what I could shoot for in the world. And hip hop did that for me. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to pinpoint an exact moment. Schooly D was a big moment for me, like mm -hmm. being able to hang out with the Parkside Killer, who turned out to be such a cool guy. Like, you know, he's such a cool guy. But that was a moment for me. Like, yeah, they, I mean, there's there's far too many to list, to be honest. Yeah, there's no, far they, too they, many they, to they list. Must, must be so much. And yeah, so, to, for me, my, my, suddenly... my head is actually starting to burst. Just trying to pick pull one out. I know, like, I know, I know. Yeah, don't worry, Go on, Rodney. It's like. Because we're going to be coming to the end of the interview soon. Okay. Um, with all the negativity yeah. that's out there at the moment, is it in what way? What do you call negativity? Well, problem with like youth, youth crime and right. that kind of situation, yeah. Yeah? yeah, where it's quite bad in London at the moment. Yeah, very, very much so. Is there anything we can do as elders, or is there kind of, is there kind of like a positive message that you can send the youth? You know what, Bob? I do, I do a lot of work with young people, and I, I mean, it, it's corny for me to sit here and say, yeah, let, you know, let's all just get along, you know? We, we, we have to do the work on the ground, and there's a lot of youth organisations and a lot of individuals who are prepared to do that work. I'd like to think I'm one of those people too. And I, I do think the music can play a part in that. Mm. And, and a lot of the time, I, I feel like people just deny the fucking obvious to me, because as you've just heard me sit here saying for so long that this music changed my life and sent me on a positive path and down a positive road. And, it, and if music can do that for me in, a ten, in terms of positivity, it can also be negative. The energy you get from it can also send you down a different road, you know? And there's, there's been lots of conspiracy theories that will say hip hop was far too positive for the man to accept. Like that it was a conspiracy to feed the, feed the community a negative style of music. Like the, the success of gangster rap, like the success of N.W.A. Mm. And I was a massive N.W.A. fan. I love Dr. Dre and all that shit. But I recognise it as a turning point where the black consciousness got taken out of the music. Songs like Self Destruction and these songs, which were uplifting communities, yeah, Queen Latifah, yeah. MC Light, Stetsa Sonic, all of these groups. Were, were, were what I consider the positive groups and were succeeding and successful. Self-destruction. Self-destruction. Yeah. And, and then we came into the gangster rap era and big business, big business got behind gangster rap in a way that it never got behind the hip hop culture before that. 
in, in a big way. And that's where we saw the beginning of rap music being sucked out of the culture. And we're just gonna take this shit and suck it out and we're gonna throw away the rest of that shit, which was where all the positivity was. Now, so groups like Public Enemy and them still existed, but now the light is being shone in different directions. And, and I do feel like over the years, those, those negative elements have become more central to hip hop music or rap music. Like, you know, you know, black folks in America has always called each other niggas and all of that shit. But we never did that in the UK. No. Nah. Jamaican people absolutely did not do that in the UK. I mean, I wasn't there, but I've heard a story of when Biggie Smalls, who who's, has a Jamaican family, God rest them again. But the first time he went to Jamaica and form, performed, he came on stage and said, where's my niggas, where's my bitches, and got booed. Because Jamaican people don't talk like that. Now, it's my niggas and my enemies. It's a new day. The music did that. That wasn't the culture didn't do that. The music that the young people grew up listening to did that. And that's, 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 we need, we need, that's we need, nothing to celebrate for we me. We need to drop that. Easier said than done. Yeah, Easier yeah. said than done. And, and a big part of it is that it makes so much money. But it is poison. It is poison. And I say that as someone who will go out into a club and still, you know, have a Jack Daniels and, and appreciate the energy and the vibes. I love a bit of Noriega and all that shit. Super fucking all day. But I recognise that you need balance. Mm. You need balance. So it's not about banning anything or you can't ban anything. In fact, if you try and ban it, you're just going to promote it even higher. But we need balance, and I don't think... Well, listen, talking of the music, what I might do is um, jump in the back of the cab and we'll right. have a little play of these, uh, these new tracks. Yeah, yeah, come on. Should we, should we do that? I've got them on my phone, so come you on and listen. All right, let me turn this off. But yeah, we're good, we're rolling. All right, so we're in the back of the cab, and I've got some new music coming out. I'm, a bit, I'm well overdue, you know, and I'll tell you mm. honestly, um, I haven't really had my MC head on for the last couple of years. I've been doing a lot of other stuff. I hustle, I'm a, I hustle. Like, this whole music thing is a hustle. And, and often, it's not that rewarding financially. To be mm. honest, you've got, you've got to love it first and foremost. I'm not, I'm not one of these young grime kids who are buying like, like McLaren cars and stuff. Like, it, never, it never panned out like that for the generation that I come from. But we do it with love. And, and this year, I've very much got my MC head on. So I've got a, a, a lot of new music coming out. And this is one of them. Like I've got a, a, so a what, what, sided seven inch coming out on True Thoughts Records right. soon, soon. And and this is one of the tunes that's going to be. And on what's there. what's this called? This one's called Recognize Me. Recognize Me in brackets. I'm an African, and I use um demons, demon boys. Recognition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My my DJ friend I nine five. Go on and big him up still. He he cuts it up for me in the chorus. Yeah, and um. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Let me play it. Let me see what you think. Let's have a little, little play. Well, my easy wall. It's a good day for the race, you know. Yo, I'm like the first in creation. Recognize me like the birth of a nation. European or Asian. Could be a Dominican, Jamaican or Haitian. I ain't hating if you're an Asian. Trini or Bayesian. Like the Queen of Sheba, the Queen Makeda, born leader, dream believer. And this is Cleopatra, I didn't believe her. When they tell me I'm a king, I don't believe that neither. No, been tricked by the great deceiver. Now I've got the devil in me, I'm a great deceiver. I'm sick, but I'm sweating, trying to break that fever. And the hate can't break me, neither. Recognize me. Like the mother that's been rocking the cradle Little sister of the sun putting food in the table African like I'm Aesop, come here my fable I'm trying to make my way to heaven like the Tower of Babel you know, It's like I'm Marcus Garvey trying to raise up an army Saw my double on a road in a Rari True story When they passed me, asked me who's my people I told him to be truthful, I was hoping he knew Could be like Shaka or Zulu, could be Tutsi or Hutu Bantu or Shanti or Sutu But who knows though, cause history lost me And here is the stories, it's like killing me so, um, so yeah, who, who produced that one? So that was produced by um, Joel Buddha, my man from up in Nottingham, who did, he's done a few things for me over the years. He was on my last album too. He did, he, he produced Murderous Style for me as well. Mm. So he produced that. And my album's been mixed by Deagle, Deagle 2000 Black Man, and uh, he was part of 4Hero. 
like full hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Yeah, my thing sounds nice. The man done Wicked. a good, good job. Big up Digo, big up Matt. And when's Studio. when's when's this gonna come out? I'm planning on putting out the album in September, but I'm planning on putting out a lot more, a lot of music between now and then. So we've, right. got, we've got the Kingdom stuff to come with me, Time, Black Twang. Like I said, I'm gonna put out this this seven inch double sided seven inch vinyl, and and then lots of bits and bobs. Like I stay active as an MC, and I, and I and I like collaborating with people. Like. You know, I, I find that, that that combined energy in the studio vibes it works well for me. But I really, I need to focus down on doing my Rodney P thing this year. And, I, and I've got my MC head on this year, I'm up for it. And when I'm up for it, I mean, I'm really up for it. So come and go, you know what I mean? So that is going to be one of the first... That's going to be out soon. That's going right. to be out soon. That'll probably be out, we're in February now, it'll probably be out in March. And how can you purchase it? It'll be out on like Thoughts Records. Um, True Thoughts. And we're going to do it as, as, a, as a seven inch vinyl, like I say. So it'll probably be quite limited, but if, mm. if, if you're on the ball and on the job, you can, you can you know I mean, you'll find it. And what else you got? Side, you got, side, got on... that. So what we're going to put on the other side of that? The look, on, the B, on the B side? Yeah. Well, there's a double A side, isn't it? Right. <laughs> double A. <laughs> this one's produced by um, Urban Monk from Birmingham. So right. you, you know, like I, my, my my producer friends come from all over the place. I just go with the vibe feel good. And Urban Monk is a guy who who's got some incredible production. He's got he's got quite a few tunes on my new thing as well. It makes really banging hip hop shit, like really banging hip hop shit. So yeah, check this. Urban Monk. Yeah. Tell him enough's as good as a feast Let money be the least of your worries Let's try to earn, try to don't go jail Stop begging man for fun, I know I just came home from out the pen I swear down I won't be going there again But that's a maybe I'm on the right track but most man slide back Or get sidetracked because the lifestyle's crazy The weekend's coming and we're wavy And all the youths know now is fuck you, pay me We can't blame them cause that would teach the babies And greed has been good from since the 80s Gecko, rhythm killer does it for the art Echo, guess me though we let the ting bark, hear the echo <laughs> Start popping it off, the game's done now, we're locking it off so Next block, chapter right. Yeah, 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 yeah All right Yes We are having done now, listen Man, they say they're gonna get rich or die trying But they're lying cause they're lazy and they're gonna die broke Cause they don't grind and don't read, they just believe in YouTube How's your seed supposed to believe in you, dude? When you've forgotten that they put us on the bottom where it's rotten And the little that we got is just a crumb still The man that's bigger be with niggas act dumb still Fuck what them niggas doing, I'll be with the black folk Strategizing or mobilizing the back bowl Or barbecuing and teaching my son to backstroke So when you're gassed and you're black, I'm like a flag with a fanny so shut I couldn't give a fuck I don't rhyme for the sake of riddling them piss pillowing rubber so disinfect the mind that's spitting in and give them little riddling and tell them boy to calm the fuck down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next chapter, for real indeed as we move. Yeah, some new pages, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yo. I don't just rhyme with no reason I'm living in the now, but no, the now is just a season Trying to milk the cow because the picnic need feeding But won't spoil the child, if he's wild, I'ma beat him Yeah, I play to win, I'm a competitor Tell my you to let the spirit in, I let it better, yeah Better that you don't pick up the thing and turn a predator But real talk, I got the devil in me like America Cause I know what the dream is, I seen it Try to rub the lot like Jimmy Hoffa did the team stick. Don't take a genius to know in these times That you get nothing for nothing and every one's got a plan, yeah, it's the base and the truth, I'm replacing the loose lips of youth with the bird and the proof, so I'm burning what them batty washers bring to the booth, we'll burn that, cause them batty washers lie to the youth, for real, yes indeed as we move, this one's the next chapter, I'm gonna close the book on them boy, that you hear me? 
Nice, nice, nice. So that's kind of like the B or AK, like the double A side. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll be putting on the seven inch. That's what we're putting on the seven inch. Just, mm. to, just to build up some vibes and let the nicer man's back on the job. You know what I mean? And when's this going to come out? What, in the next month, month or Probably two? Like or? the next month, like, we've actually, I've actually given it into the label already, so they're in the process of, you know, there's a back catalogue now with getting vinyl pressed and stuff. It's a new mm. day, it's not what it was. But it'll be out, like, while we're on tour doing this Kingdom tour, that will be coming out. So before the end of the tour, I'll probably have the vinyl of that on sale at the shows, to be honest. So you, are you going to drop this at the tour as well? I'll be, I'll be performing some new music hmm. shit on the tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I've got a lot of new music. There's, there's a fair bit of it to come, so yeah. And you wanna... Plus, I want to be doing the classics as well. I'm, I'm doing my old school thing. I'm going to definitely do some London Posse stuff. I want to, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, I'm, really, like, I'm, mix, I'm mix, so mix looking it forward up. to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm so looking forward to that tour. I can't, so I can't, wait, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be going to be good. Man. It's going to be our vibes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I was talking about that. All right, let's, let's, let me find you a bit of Kingdom music then. we got we got a thing that we've just recorded. We're working with Nutty P, like like Thai producers a lot. So who's, who's kind of idea was this with the King Kingdom tour? Was it kind of, was you ch was you chatting with Thai and Black Twang and you just... Yeah, pretty much. Like, pretty much. They invited, like... Ty and Black Twang had already had a conversation about it. We, we've known each other for years yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Like, bear that in mind. But they had already had a conversation and kind of put it together and came to me with the notion, like, boom, let's do this thing. And for me, it was a no-brainer. I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. Um, there was a few issues behind the scene that I wasn't particularly happy about. But once I'd agreed to do it, I, I thought the value of it in, mm. in, in, in us showing that unified strength as three of the elders who've been here so long, to kind of reinvigorate, not reinvigorate, but add some more energy to what is here in terms of the kind of music that we love, mm. like the, the, the kind of hip hop music that we love, as opposed to just the straight rap music like we was talking about earlier. Like I think the, 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 the power of the, the, the unified strength, it was, it was worth mm. any little headaches that we would go through to kind of get it off the ground. And, and, and thankfully we were able to do that, so. Definitely looking forward to that. Right, the next track you're going to drop is going to be... Find it. Hang on, let me find it first. What's it called? Is it actually called King Dem? Nah. So, the track's actually called The Conversation and in brackets, Done Yet. Because we ain't done yet. So right. that's, that's the title. And that's the, kind of the topic. Um, when I play the tune, you'll get it. But, um, yeah, it's me, Ty and Black Twang. Me and Ty and Black Twang, we wrote mm. it in the studio. Like we got the beat on the, the day we went to see Nighty P. Nighty P producing it, wicked young producer. Um, and he played us the beat in the studio, and we were having this conversation, and we just kind of penned it. And and it's it's back to back verses, and we kind of that's how we wrote it. Like, so yeah, it's pretty much a conversation. So yeah, like, no palavering thing. Let me just play the tune. And let's uh, let's let's have a listen. I'm done sliding into DMs I'm on tour spending my per DMs And sliding into BMs I'm booking hotels And me and bad man who can't gel It's planes, trains, automobiles We're doing it's well hard to tell I I'm in YSL, in my YSL Got active with my brothers We ain't taking no L's We're still winning But I hate a shitty opinion Them boy that caught up in the feeling Got it looking a bit I ain't into play play Fuck you down like AJ Never done the safe way Every message is a mayday There's a method to my payday Smile yeah, 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 yeah. Driving crazy those are still driving Miss Daisy. I hear you, brother. But yo, we, we, we ain't begging it, we're getting it. They're lying about the history they inherited. They're heretics. Like, we ain't set the pace and bust the style they used to benefit. I'm done with all them dumb chat. Them boy, they're better get yeah, a Yeah, them boy, you're begging it. And I know they're pre every detail. Really? Seeing it, we pull it off, opening flops, and we fell. Fuck they're em. in the WhatsApp group, forwarding emails. Screenshotting chats and making memes like a female. I haven't picked a particular pepperoni pizza. Frankly, I'm not impressed, and it's Franklin if you're a reaper. Whoa. Yanking at your reaper. For like Trump loose in the people, some cats claiming the double when it's really their only feature. And we ain't done yet. Back where we started, the kingdom ain't come yet. On road to the shows and we're picking up nice checks. Still eating cool and a life blessed. And we, and, we, and we ain't done yet. Back where we started, the kingdom ain't come yet. On road to the shows and we're picking up nice checks. Still eating cool and a life blessed. We ain't done yet, done yet, done yet, done yet. Yeah, Nutty on the bottom. Try to bring it on my Nutty P every time. We ain't done yet, done yet, done yet, done yet, done yet. Done yet.
It's not about whether my metaphors are better than yours or whether my show is live with better applause. Just know I'm going for mine. You better get yours. Indeed, the flow is divine, so forget the war. I never let a statue tell me how nice I am. I'm not a slave, I'm a king. You can't put price on man. And you can't measure my greatness when your skills are calibrated. The skills are calculated by the way some she's a fit. We're some soldiers in the wars, chasing adulation and applause. But prepared to sacrifice it for a cause. Our mindset is not like was Nutty was not EP on the production? Yeah, mm. yeah, Nutty's on production on that one. Where's, where's Nutty from? Is he from, from this manor? Nutty's just, just over Wandsworth Bridge. I say he's a Londoner. Yeah, he's local, he's local, he's local. And he's done a few bits on my album as well. Right. Um, for my album, I've got a tune on my album with, with Ocean Wisdom that he's produced as well. That's that's going to be nice as well. That's a nice tune. So Nutty's, Nutty's definitely, definitely a big part of this project. And that's just one tune. Mm. Like, as the kingdom, we're putting together a, a, a project, definitely. Do you reckon you'll release uh, like an album or? Well, we're going to do an EP first. Right. But but I feel like it's going to be an ongoing thing. Mm. And plus as well, I mean, Kingdom is uh, at the moment is us three and it's Kingdom, King D-E-M. I did That's Kingdom, right. you feel me like? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we ain't we ain't ego driven enough to claim that that's just us. Mm. So there's there's other people to come and get involved in this project. What, other, other MCs? Other MCs mm. that we want to draw in, in from, from yeah. our generation to, to, to kind of like, you know, to act as mentors. Because it ain't about trying to say, <clears throat> give us more light, but actually to act as mentors to say, there's a different way to do this hip hop thing. You don't have to be a grime rapper or a driller or a trapper or, hmm. you don't have to be that. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I've got the lyrics I say, I'm from the road, but I've never been a road rapper. I grab the mic and tell the youth, them black lives matter. You know what I mean? Like, it's a diff there's a different... And I know the road's better than a lot of these youths who are claiming the road. Road talk. Wouldn't, wouldn't he? You know, like, is there... Do you reckon there could be, um, like, in the possible future where you could get other artists involved and do some... You know, like, BDP done with Stop the Violence. Could we do a track and... You know what? I, don't, I wouldn't want to do a corny track, and I think... Not and corny, I, no. And, and the thing with that is, I don't think we're the generation to do that, track. Right. Because... You'd need the kids who the youths are listening to now to mm. do that track. Like when but, they but, did but, stop the violence, we were the we were the young guys who were out on the roads listening to that, and those were our artists. Now you'd need the guys who the young people are listening to, and that's not us. But we honest. couldn't we couldn't mix it up. Like I've, I've old and old and new. Potentially, potentially, but I think that, that a song like that would have to come from within the generation. Personally, mm. I would feel like I'd, I'd feel like that. You know, to have to have the reach and the pull that it would need. It has to come from within that generation. And I do think there's artists within that generation who represent something different. And they, that's, some of these guys are incredible. Some of these are incredible MCs, incredible artists. Someone mm. like someone like Getz, for me, one of the best country, one of the best MCs this country's ever produced. He's amazing as an MC. You know? What's the the grime scene? I have to like check, check him out. He's incredible. Mm. He's incredible. There's, and there's, he's, he's not, that's just one name, it's just singular. There mm. are lots of them who are doing incredible work. And it would need to come from them. It would need to come from right. them. And, and I'm, well, and, you know, and I'm if, sure if it, on the ground, them men are doing whatever they can actively to try and, and, and address the situations around them. Like, I don't want to make up, like, all of the new young artists are just negative and, and, and about nothing. I don't believe that for a second. I think there's a lot of young, talented guys out here trying to make a path for themselves and, and trying to navigate this cesspit, hmm. you know? So, and, and trying to make money. And there's a balance to be struck. You know what I mean? Mm. If you think of someone like like Prodigy from Mob Deep, you know, if you think of someone like him, God rest him. I we mentioned a lot of dead people today, but God rest him. He's a man like Mob Deep is a road gully foggy road thing. But when you, when you when you hear that young man talk in interviews before he passed, he was very cultural and spiritual and, and was struggling with how to find the balance in the music. And I, I would imagine that there's a lot of young artists now, even from our generation, but there's a lot of young artists now who are having that same struggle. How do I, how do I express my, my positivity and my culture while also not like turning off my audience? You know? mm. so it's, mm. it's, 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 a, it's a fine balance, it's a fine line to tread, real talk. Well, going back to the, um, the tune, when's, um, when's it going to be released? They're just waiting for us to deliver. Again, it's going to be released on True Thoughts Records. Um, I've taken it in there and they've agreed to have that. And have so, you got like a B a B side? By the end of next week, we're going to have four tunes finished. And that's going straight out. Mm. So it's just a matter of how long it takes to, to, to manufacture. 
is going to be how long it takes to put out because we're not dilly dallying with the thing. This this music is for right now, you know. So so definitely look for it. Definitely look. For it. <laughs> definitely look for it. So it's coming. I'll be coming. looking. And tell yeah, tell me about the tour. So when when's the tour start? The tour starts on the 28th of February. It oh, will start off in Leeds. Mm. We start off in Leeds on the 28th. What have we got here? We got Leeds on the 28th. Then we go to Sheffield on the 2nd of March. Right. Yeah. So it's really three months. 2nd of March, we're in Sheffield. 7th of March, we're in Bristol. Mm. 8th of March, we're in Birmingham. Then we go to Cardiff on the 15th, Newcastle on the 16th, and Nottingham on the 22nd. Right. And then we got a couple of weeks, and then we do the big Jazz Cafe show, which is the 11th of April. So 11th. Right. 11th of April, yeah. And, um, yeah, we got a few. Yeah, I'm few looking forward to that. lined up for that as well. Like, what we what we're doing is when we're on the road, we're looking to make sure we support and hail up the local talent in every city we go to. So, support acts are going to be different in every town mm. because we want someone from every town to come and represent. Which their is town. which is really nice, nice to do. I think it makes yeah. sense, and that's about a new, an, an up and coming group and the legacy groups. Mm. You know, both because all of those towns have got hip hop histories to them. So we are looking to connect with that. And when we come to London, we intend to do the same. We intend to make sure the stage is populated by our MC friends. Real talk. Rodney, what I do is, well, at the end of this interview, I'll stick a little, um, be a what, what do you show, call bro. it? Like, um, like a photograph or something? Of yeah, I can, send you, I can send you like a list little of dates, list. a little, little bit of blurb about where we're going to be and stuff. And how about people that are, that are missing out on this tour, like in places like Scotland and other yeah. places? Is there any chance that you can go to them areas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, I need to stress, like, when we announced the dates for this tour, We've had so much interest from other cities mm. about can you come to our town, and we've 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 turned them all down to be honest, because we've just ring fenced these eight shows. We're going to do these eight shows. We're going to focus on them, focus them and down, then work on some music, and go back out again later in the year on mm. on, on a bigger and better scale. Right, and and hit up, hit up hit up your local town. So look for us, people. Tell your local promoters if you are to the kingdom in your local town. Make sure your local promoters know. And um, we will definitely be available to reach. Like, yeah. And then plus, I'm a man, I'm always on the road, you know. Like, I'd get around. Me and my man, Daddy Skits, quite a big up my call, do you don't know. Like, so while all this is going on, Black Twang's gonna be on the road, Ty's gonna be on the road, I'm gonna be on the road. But later in the year, we're gonna reform like, right, like, like the Transformer dude and do this Kingdom thing again and bring more of our friends along. Because, like I say, we're, the, we're, we're, we're not trying to hold this title. There's a lot of kings and a lot of queens, too. You know, there's a lot of queens too. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of artists I really want to bring on the road. There's a mm. lot of artists that I really want to reach out to and say, come and get involved. Because, like I say, a big part of it is about mentoring the scene that's coming behind us. And a lot of the young guys who come from the scene that we come from are finding it hard to get that breakthrough because grime and trap and drill are sucking up all the light. And, and, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I think there's a lot of interest in the good music being made within them scenes. But this traditional hip hop scene that I love, yeah, we need to count, you know what I mean? Get a little kick, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here to try and uh, do. It's ex exciting times, isn't it? Mm -hmm, absolutely. But Rodney, last kind of thing I always ask on these interviews is, um, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to kind of past and present? Yeah. And I know you know that there's going to be people like like you're going to kick yourself. Oh, I should have mentioned him, mentioned yeah, her, but yeah, I hate those. I really I hate mean, those kind of questions. Do you want to just kind of give it uh, yeah shout out to uh, anybody what, knows I, anyone that knows me or yeah, definitely that. I mean, big up all the crew that's met me over the years. Big up, big up. You know, like I like to think I work on vibes. That's what I always say. I even say in tunes, I work on vibes, and I'd like to think I left some good vibes and energies about the place. I'd like to think so. So if we've met on the road and we've got along, I want to salute you. If I've met you on the road and you think I'm a... I apologise. <laughs> I was probably having a... I'm going to edit that C, that C word out. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do, bro. <laughs> do what you got to do. Put a little beep on it. Or yeah, I, I can't do beeps. <laughs> <laughs> but in our real talk, like... Yeah, if you know me, if you know me mm. and, and, and we vibed and we shared energy, I want to salute you, but really in, in this one your time, I'd have to say big up to Sipo. Big up to, to I was gonna say Sipo. Yeah. Like, this 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 whole career that I've had really begins with an invitation from him hmm. to come and work. He was already established as a human beatbox. People knew him and knew his talent. And if he had never made that call to say come with him, 
I don't know that I'd be doing this music thing now. I like, you know, I was, I, was a, I, was a, I was a rapper and a fan, but I don't know that I would have made the choices to say, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. It's the, it's the call that he put in that made all of this thing possible. So yeah, massive, him, so massive him. shout out to Sipo and uh, rest, rest in peace. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Rodney, listen, I hope you enjoyed this interview. You know what, one more thing, you know, because mm. and this is quite recent. Um, and this just happened just the other day and it, and it really shocked me. I woke up to the news, it really shocked me. A young man named Cadet, mm. who's another young artist, who was just about to make a mark. And, I, and I'm, I, feel, I feel confident that he was about to make a mark. And he passed real recently. And yeah, condolences to his friends and his family and mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And all the uh, other, you know, everybody else as well that's passed. There's yeah. a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, it's been, it's been. Paul Trouble Anderson. Yeah, absolutely. Another legend out here. I, I was lucky enough to interview him for the for the last Pirates documentary that I spoke about earlier. He's he's on that documentary. Mm. And he's another one, man, who's, who, whose story and, and, and legacy and work ethic is a part of why we're all here. Without them, man, this whole thing would look different. It would be different. So we have to salute those guys, absolutely. Without a doubt. In fact, I went to um, Stevie Hyverdeen. We had this party for Stevie Hyverdeen. What Hyver was that, D. the chip shop? In the chip shop mm. the other day. Just the other day, Navigator. On the Sunday, Rabbit yeah, Twins, yeah. David Boomer, all their money came out. Beautiful day. Uncle Doug's and all of them, man, a beautiful day. Just celebrating and holding their money up to the light. Another beautiful day. And again, like, jungle is known. Steve Hyper D, them man have a set pace. Like, them man mm. set pace. Like, the shit looks different without them. So we have to, we have to show our due respect, for sure. Without a doubt. Well, Rodney, listen, absolute honour respect to have you in the old chicken. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm, I feel like listen, oh, I'm good company. Like, yes. I've seen some of the interviews. Like, my man name's been in there. I've been in there too now. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, um, as I say, you know, it's all quite relaxed and yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good. It's important that we document this history. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Like, as we were saying earlier, like, we ain't getting any younger. No. You know? Like, you know, the documentary filmmakers and, and, and the, the scholars ain't rushing to write our story down. Film our stories is important. We do it for ourselves. About a doubt. Yeah. So any, anybody watching this, uh, subscribe to this channel yes, and indeed. check out the other interviews with people like Ragged yes, Twins, yes, Skinny indeed. Man, yes, Shady. Yes, indeed. Because it ain't all about... Listen, these, these things ain't all about high-profile people either. It's also about bringing people in that aren't so Dolby well D. known. You did Dolby D, who was one of my hip-hop heroes. Oh, Dolby D, yeah, yeah Dolby, Fraggle. Yeah, yeah, big up Frags, big up Frags, no doubt. <laughs> this, this, this. That's, Again, that's another guy whose art, his, his heart and his energy is just so warm and so giving. Yeah, yeah. Like, them man are just like a hip hop historian. Yeah, absolutely. With a, with a cast iron memory. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually going to go out again with Frags, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a proper like a proper one. Like okay. actually get out the cab, and go cover garden, and, and do proper spots. proper spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them man will know. Those are the people that we all got here and found here already. Them man are like. They're first. Like, mm. Them are the first. Man, like, yeah, we get them up. Rodney, listen, absolute honour to have it. I hope you enjoyed this. I have, I really am. Right. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I want to watch it back now. Yeah. And cuss myself for how much shit I left down. I right, shake my hand. All good, brother. Anyway, Governor, we're going to get you back home, All yeah? Right, please do. Right. Please do. Please I'll put do. your seatbelt on. <laughs>